In this one, we're taking a look at Corsair's new IQ H150i RGB Elite All-in-One Liquid Cooler. Intended to offer stellar performance at a lower cost versus the LCD and Capellix versions of Corsair's triple fan units, the newly designed H150i Elite, as I'm going to shorten its name to, uses Corsair's AF120 Elite Series PWM fans and limits RGB lighting to just the pump block housing. Coming in at £164.99 in the UK, let's take a closer look at the new, more affordable Corsair H150i Elite cooler. Corsair uses a conventional 27mm thick black aluminium 360mm radiator. The low permeation rubber black sleeve tubes have a reasonable degree of flexibility to them. Alongside the flexibility of the tubes, there is also adjustment at the entry points to the pump block unit. As is usual for Corsair, the base of the copper cold plate is supplied with pre-applied thermal paste. Technically, Corsair says that this is a micro-skived copper split flow cold plate. Basically, that's a fancy way of saying how the cooler is manufactured with regards to the cold plate and how the fins work. Sizing of the contact area is reasonable, and that's critical because Corsair offers support for all modern Intel and AMD sockets including AM5, LGA1700 and Threadripper. One of the areas of refinement for Corsair's design has been on the pump. The new design features 16 individually addressable RGB LEDs which diffuse into an all-around housing. The pump itself is capable of varying its speed via IQ and runs at 2900 RPM under its highest extreme speed profile in our testing. I must say that the understated look of the pump top with a simple Corsair logo cover and RGB surround is very appealing to my preference. The AF120 Elite PWM fans used on Corsair's cooler do not feature RGB lighting. Instead, it's the pump that covers LED duties. The 120mm fluid dynamic bearing blowers operate at 41850 RPM, but they also support a zero RPM mode. Corsair highlights the use of anti-vortex veins to better concentrate airflow. I must say that I appreciate the relative lack of cables for Corsair's fans. There's no fancy proprietary connection or ARGB cables, just a simple 4-pin PWM. And the units themselves look pretty good too, particularly if you aren't fussed by RGB lighting. Corsair's approach for cable connectivity is absolutely superb, as we have come to expect from the vendor. A single discrete USB-C cable connects to the pump block unit. This then provides all the necessary connectivity behind the motherboard tray for the fans, the RGB lighting and the IQ link. So basically, you only have to sprawl a single cable across the motherboard socket area. That's fantastic. Plus, it uses a convenient Type-C connector rather than micro USB. IQ handles control for basically the entire CPU cooler. You can mess with the various RGB lighting options for the pump housing, including synchronization with other Corsair components such as memory, and hardware lighting for prior to IQ initialization such as during system boot is also available. You can set fan and pump speed with a high degree of adjustment, particularly for the fan speed curves. And I like the fact that Corsair includes temperature data for the all-in-one cooler's liquid as this is another useful metric when assessing your cooling setup. Overall, there's nothing bad to say about IQ, as has been the case for quite a while. Yes, it's certainly not a lightweight solution these days, but it is feature heavy and it does work very well. And with regards to the warranty for this £164.99 CPU cooler, that's five years, which is exactly what we'd expect at this price point. Installation of the entire cooler is very easy, even as far along as connecting the cables. You install the relevant standoffs on the default AMD backplate. After switching out the Intel cold plate brackets to the AMD ones, the block and its pre-applied thermal paste can be mounted. Then the radiator and fans are mounted. And finally, one can connect the USB-C cable to the pump block housing and connect all the relevant cables, including internal USB 2. The mounting process is quick, it's very secure, and the cable management is clean. For testing, we're using our usual set of hardware. That's an AMD Ryzen 9 5950X processor overclocked to 4.45 GHz with a BIOS set voltage of 1.3 volts, so that's in excess of 220 watts of package power. We also test with the chip in Precision Boost Overdrive mode to see how the cooler handles that. 
The motherboard is a Gigabyte B550 Aorus Master with its excellent VRM setup. We use the Seasonic TX1000 1 kilowatt power supply for clean juice. We've got a Gigabyte RTX 2060 Super graphics card in zero decibel mode. And the chassis is a Fractal Design Mesh Phi 2 with triple 140mm fans, two as intake and one as rear exhaust. For the test procedure, we use a 30 minute looped run of Cinebench R23 NT and we record the steady state temperature towards the end of that 30 minute run. The ambient conditions are held around about 22 to 24 degrees Celsius and where they vary slightly outside of this window, we will add in additional tests just to ensure validity of the data. As always, if you want more details on the comparison coolers, the test procedures and all that information, then check out the full written review on the main KidGuru webpage. Let's jump into the testing. Let's start off with noise performance at 100% fan speed. This is important for getting an indication of where our performance expectations should lie based on noise output. Running at 52 dBA full noise output, the Corsair IQ H150i RGB Elite certainly isn't a quiet CPU cooler. In fact, with those triple fans blasting air, it is one of the loudest coolers that we've actually tested. The key saving grace is that Corsair provides excellent and easily tunable fan speed control inside IQ. The lower limit of 400 RPM and competent 0 RPM mode will come in handy. As we often see, high noise output is not very appealing for one's ears, but it does bring with it strong cooling performance from the Corsair H150i RGB Elite. A delta temperature of 58 degrees Celsius on our overclocked Ryzen 9 5950X is strong. This puts Corsair up against some other 360mm all-in-ones, notably the Acetec MSI Meg Core Liquid S360. With that said, Corsair's unit is far more expensive than the Fractal and Deepcool 360mm all-in-ones that it is matching. So you're probably going to have to put a hefty premium on the value of Corsair's warranty, design and ecosystem for the pricing to make sense. We adjust each cooler's fan speeds until our 40 dBA noise output target is reached. Despite high 100% fan speed noise levels, we only have to reduce the fan's duty cycles to 70% to achieve our 40 dBA target. Interestingly, this resulted in a recorded speed of 1320 RPM according to IQ. The pump was maintained at 2900 RPM, though there is plenty of flexibility for adjusting its speed within the Corsair software. The reduction in fan speed duty cycle is less significant on the Corsair H150i RGB Elite than with some competing coolers, but the new 360mm unit still gets hit hard by the reduction to 1320 RPM fans. We observe a delta temperature of 63 degrees Celsius. This puts the Corsair unit level with an Acetec Sapphire competitor, as well as the Deepcool Castle. Both of those coolers are cheaper though, and the Fractal Lumen S36 RGB has stretched to a lead over Corsair's pricier cooler. I'd say that these 40 dBA thermal results are okay, but not outstanding for Corsair. Next up is the Precision Boost Overdrive set of results. Firstly, it's critical to note that small differences in the display delta temperatures are not as important for our PBO testing because the clock speed and cooling power achieved are more important metrics. PBO sees the H150i RGB Elite fall in roughly in line with the rest of its performance showing. Corsair's new cooler is a bit better than the Deepcool Castle 360EX and the Fractal Lumen S36, but some of the Acetec big boys will manage to squeeze out another few clicks of the core ratio multiplier. And VRM cooling is uninspiring, as we expect from a typical all-in-one liquid cooler. In fact, Corsair's air guide technology on the fans should mean that the flow of air is more focused through the radiator and therefore is less likely to interact with the VRM area. So I guess the cooler is doing its job based on this set of results. The IQ H150i RGB Elite is a positive new addition to Corsair's vast array of liquid coolers. The real focus point here is clearly the inclusion of the company's new AF Elite series fans and the sizable LED housing design on the pump block cover is the other differentiating feature. Performance from the cooler is as good as we would expect from a 360mm all-in-one. While the H150i RGB Elite wasn't quite as proficient as the top runners in our charts, that was largely due to lower RPM fans, and a good enough showing was put in against two competent triple fan AIOs from Fractal and Deepcool. With that said, the 100% fan speed noise output is higher than we would expect from a cooler with a set of 1850 RPM fans. The 40 dBA noise normalized performance data, which is once again behind the lead in pack, also backs up that point. I guess the key saving grace here is that Corsair's fan speed control and customization within IQ is absolutely fantastic. 
And talking of IQ, the ecosystem that Corsair has built is truly remarkable. Fan curves, pump speed, coolant temperature, all that useful info is contained within one sleek piece of software. Plus you get a wealth of control over the LED lighting on the pump and an ability to properly match the colors with other Corsair products. While the cooling performance is roughly what we would expect from a 360mm all-in-one liquid cooler, that is to say, not superb, but not disastrous, it is very easy to see that a price premium is justifiable for the excellent experience offered by the IQ ecosystem. No, the £164.99 price tag in the UK is not what we would call competitive for the performance offered by the Corsair IQ H150i RGB Elite liquid cooler. However, I can see why people would justifiably pay a premium for this unit with that superb IQ integration and control, as well as the really cool pump housing design with RGB lighting. So yeah, if you're already within that Corsair IQ ecosystem, this probably is one that will appeal to you. I've been Luke Hill for Kit Group. Thank you for watching our video review of the Corsair IQ H150i RGB Elite Liquid Cooler. I'm glad that's the final time I'm going to say that because that is an annoying name to say out loud. Try it, trust me. Let us know what you think in the comment section down below. And as always, if you like this video, give us a like and subscribe, do all that YouTube stuff. Please do check out the main written review on the Kikuru webpage. Interact with us on the usual social media channels and I will catch you in the next one.